Hello and welcome to a 3v3 cast on events of Stronghold. Starting off, we have again and again playing as a warlock on the left hand side. We have Dawnbringer in the center of the map playing as the orc warboss. And finally, for the blue team, we have Retaxis playing as a tech marine over here on the right hand side. Moving on to the red team, we also have another tech marine, Morgan MLG man, playing as tech marine on the left hand side up against the warlock. We have Marky Mark in the center of the map, playing as a warp spider exarch already in the center of the map, playing up against that war bus. And finally, for the red team, we have Fox Gamma playing as a plague champion up against the tech marine. Going to be a bit of a odd matchup, tech marine versus the plague champion, both ranged commanders doing lots of damage, both with plenty of sustained potential. Meanwhile, in mid, Warbus just charging forward. Marky Mark unable to actually do anything to control this Warbus just yet. Banshees could try and engage the Warbus, but the Warbus, with the stomp ability, can easily counter this Banshee squad. And you can see the Banshee's already trying to avoid him, trying to move in towards some other units instead. The shooters are not focusing down the Banshees as they close the gap there. Shooters really need to start focusing down these Banshees. These Banshees need to start turning around. They need to retreat away, straight away now, because they're taking a lot of damage trying to go in here. Banshees with 70 melee skill compared to Sluggers with only 60. The Banshees will not get special to buy these Sluggers. The Banshees definitely have a chance to use special to Sluggers and that's why the Banshees should try and focus down the Sluggers before trying to go for the ranged units because they should be able to win that little matchup. Although with the Warbus helping out it, it's a bit more difficult. Meanwhile on the bottom side again and again taking down the power node, gain four soft those a tech marine here from Adeptus or Morgan or G-Man will force him off taking down a model there. But three generators placed down very quickly here for the red team, and same thing for blue team as well. On the same side, in fact, both powers farms are kind of mirrored with each other. One generator on either side, on the red side. What the spider do? Going to be unable to finish off that war bus double tower avengers. We're focusing them down. But the angry bits, you could see the massive health regen that he had retreating away there. Angry bits does give eight and a half health regen per second for several seconds after you use the ability to charge in or charge out of combat. You know, a slug is desperately trying to chase down some dire avengers. Their squad is so low right now, but is taking down multiple models. Their aggression is paying off, taking down an extra two models before retreating away. However, it might cost them the entire squad, down to just 28 HP. The water spider is not teleporting in. Could have tried to teleport in very aggressively, try to force melee and then use its ranged weapon to try and finish the squad off, and may have been able to do so since it was so low. You know, on this left hand side, the Warlock getting knocked over here, but with a shotgun blast down, there's nothing to actually stop these Banshees from getting in to melee combat. These scouts, without their elite training as well, taking a lot of damage here, not having that massive health regen when outside of combat, and they will be forced off in the end, and again and again, they're going to be pushing in once again onto the Jurassic Farm, applying a lot of pressure against Morgan MLG. Man, that Tech Marine though is so low. Banshees just needing one more hit, not going to be able to get that hit. And will be forced off after losing a model. In on the right hand side, some more Banshee chasing action going to go down, and some more Banshees are going to be running away. Retaxis did have the potential to throw a grenade there, but the back grenade looks like it was on cooldown, given that these scouts are still missing a bit of energy. What spider though taking a lot of damage, teleporting outside without any cover here. The tech marine, the scouts, the tactical marines all focusing him down, bringing him down to half health ready. Of course, in a way, even further, and the Guardian Weapons team is going to get forced off here. We'll not be able to do much against these units if they remain behind the green cover. Courage damage is blocked behind green cover, and at maximum range, a unit behind green cover will take six lots or six salvos of suppression in order to actually suppress the unit. Meaning it's very ineffective at long range suppression when the units are well entrenched. The Guardian Weapons team though taking a lot of damage to Warbus, his default weapon actually having 49 range equivalent to what a sniper rifle might have in this game. It's a bit odd seeing the Warbus being able to outrange so many units throughout the game, it doesn't actually do that much damage, it's only 10 at DPS, but still, it can be quite annoying. The Warbus going to go in after some heretics, does have the spiky armor, does have the angry bits, his health regen is just spiraling out of control, up to 10 or up to 11 and a half health regen with the angry bits spiky armor combination roughly. We're going to get forced off. He is 
as much as he is very strong together as a one-man army, he cannot last too long against the entire army by himself. You know, in the center of the map, Dawn Bring getting at four stuff with the remainder of his army after his war boss was forced away. In fact, the Banshee's coming in for a flank, might be able to have taken down, but does get a slightly decent retreat half day. Also avoid the Banshees for the most part if he came in or the Banshees were in position a little bit earlier. A few hits from their power swords that might have been able to do it. Meanwhile, the Warlock going in for the solo bash here against Adeptus, or against Morgan and Wong G-Man. Keep getting the two names, even though it is the same person, Adeptus is also known as Morgan and Wong G-Man. I, I should try and stick to one name, I'm going to stick to Adeptus. Adeptus getting pushed on his side, Warlock with an Immolator just soloing, it generates a farm. You know, Raptor is getting double shotgun blasted there. There are two shotgun scout squads, one which doesn't actually have a sergeant or elite training on it. Double scouts do need to be careful though without seeing any kind of green cavern against a double CSM and a plague champion. They're just going to bleed models. Look at the amount of damage coming in here. Green gonna get thrown down. Going to actually catch out two models on that CSM squad and with the tech ring giving it a little bit of bolster support, able to take down a model. But still tech ring desperately trying to chase down a Raptor squad. Does have the Bionix upgrade. And we'll see him use the Bionics here. And we'll be able to actually land the Bionics on the Raptors, but because the Raptors are in the middle of a special, when you're in the middle of a special, you're immune to knockback. So, as much as it looked like the Bionics didn't do anything, it did do some damage, although the knockback is definitely preferred. Now, Tech Marine, though, taking a lot of damage from damage over time, but the Bionics providing 2.5 health regen per second will allow the Tech Marine to easily survive the piercing damage over time from the Plague Champion. It does stack, but. The Bionics or with any kind of health regen item, it does make it much harder to try and finish off those units, or the commanders in fact. Meanwhile, Adept is gained doubled here by both Eldar and Orcs Dawnbringer, and again and again going in for the duel. Going to go in for a power bash on at their side. Meanwhile, Red Team, they need to start applying some pressure now on the other side of the map, or they need to start coming in to actually defend their natural generator farm. Double shooters, Dire Avengers, Banshees, and a Warlock should easily tear down this farm before anyone can even come in to help. So, Red Team may have been benefited from just going towards Blue Team's journey to farm and just bashing that instead. But what I can do here is win the engagement here and go for a push onto the journey to farm on this left hand side. But Banshee's going in a bit too prematurely, going to be forced off already, and that Warp Spider just taking so much damage is going to get specialed by the Warlock into the center of the army and just absolutely destroyed. 392 VPs to 455 Red Team ahead in VPs, and also ahead of tech actually. Two players on Red Team are tier 2 already, meanwhile, Blue Team are all taking up to tier 2 themselves. And it's only Adeptus that is falling behind, who is taking up to tier 2 now. You know, on this side, a lot of dead units appearing on the ground here. That Tech Marine is taking a lot of damage. It also has the Axe of Mechanicum queued up as well. Normally, don't see the Axe of Mechanicum too much in 3v3s. It can be much more difficult to pull off a melee Tech Marine in 3v3. But a melee Tech Marine is always a fun option to go for. I actually really enjoy going for a melee Tech Marine. Melee Tech Marine does do 50 power melee damage, but with the Bionix it is increased or increases his melee damage by a further 10%. I actually have a look at the correct one. Uh, sorry, it's by 15%. So his melee damage goes up to 57.5 power melee damage. On top of that, you can combine it with the Refactor Shield. The problem is with the Tech Marine's Refactor Shield, it does not give him immunity to knockback, unlike other Refactor Shields. Immunity to knockback really does help out because it means that you can't be special with the shield turned on. But in the case of the Tech Marine, you can always be special with that, with the shield turned on. But at the same time, Tech Marine can get into melee combat much easier since his shield does reduce the accuracy of units firing at him. And the shield as well is quite a cheap upgrade on Tech Marine, only costing him 110 requisition 20 power. But he is best suited at trying to focus down other non melee units, even with his melee build. The Tech Marine going to go into melee combat now. The thing is, there is no AV whatsoever here for Ataxis and Raptors with a Power Fist themselves. And the Tech Marine not actually having the Refactor Shield available. This Tech Marine is definitely going to struggle here and does get out there just in time if he stayed in there a little bit longer. A few more hits from the Power Fist of the Raptors and he would have been fisted to death. You know, Blood Crusher out in the field, going to apply a lot of pressure against Retaxes. Does have some Stern Guard veterans who can arm themselves with Vengeance Rounds, which are effective against vehicles, but they are only a soft form of AV. Will not be able to do anything against a Worshipped Blood Crusher. 
you know, on the left hand side. Adept is going to get four stuff here. Tech Marine and Scouts running back to base. And Warboss is charging in with the angry bits. Going to go in hard here against Fox Gamma. Some shooters are on the field. There's also a Blood Crusher who's taking some damage from somewhere, but I'm not sure where. There are some Vengeance Rounds, Devastators, and the Warbles with the Power Claw. That should be enough to actually deal with the Blood Crusher. Raptors are trying to fight down that Warbus, and that Power Fist really is helping out a lot. The Warbus, though, is getting a bit low with the Demonic Strike on the Raptors. It's not even needed at this point. Raptors is just going to fist down the Warbus and a Noxious Cloud on top of a Shooter Boy squad, a Shoot Boy squad inside the building as well. Taking a lot of damage, but it looks like the squad might be able to barely live overall. Weird boy out in the field as well for Dawnbring. Going to come in very useful, very nice warp vomit on top of this Wraith Guard squad. He's going to stun them in place, also do some decent damage to them. The sub commanders definitely need to be careful of Chaos Raptors. Chaos Raptors are extremely good at dealing with single target units. Demonic Fury actually doing 125 melee damage on hits can be very useful for trying to kill a retreating sub commander. But this melee tech marine is doing alright, does have that refractor shield, but getting knocked over by the plasma devastator shot coming in, that aspiring champion does fall down in that engagement. Tech marine desperately trying to chase the final member, but is not going to be able to do anything about it. Meanwhile, the generator farm is getting bashed here. Blue team are going to be a generator farm behind at the same time, they've only just started to rebuild the natural on the other side of the map, as it looks like Adeptus has pushed in through with his flame attacks, comrades, and the remainder of his army. Again and again, sitting on the back foot after having so much aggression in tier 1 and tier 2 is actually the one receiving the majority of the pressure now. Banshees are coming in, along the wall up, but Flame of Tactical Marines already in the area and could start burning down the journeys of farm now. And Tech Marine with a Master Crafted Bolts are very nice at slowing down the Banshees from getting into combat. Rap uh, Rangers actually going to go down in that engagement. The Merciless Strike not actually hitting anything. Looks like that was a bit of a mistake. The Tech Marine will fall down. The Haywire Grenade onto the Razorback, but the Banshees are already forced off. There's nothing to finish off that Razorback in particular. ASM might be able to kill the Exarch on the Banshees here. If they were to turn around, the Exarch is leading, and so it would be the first model to get focused down by the ASM squad, but going to be unable to actually do it in the end. And on the center of the map, Dawnbring does decide to push in through, forcing off Marky Mark there in the center of the map. His army now forced off, and the Clark's Gamma is having to go in as well. His natural power farm looks like it's in a bit of risk right now as Retaxis does push in further forward with his stern guards and scouts. Tech Marine though, very tanky with that Refractor Shield, burning quite a lot of energy to actually use the Bionic's ability, but the Refractor Shield decreasing the accuracy of enemies by 20%. That Raptor Squad is definitely going to fall down. They have two models, surprisingly, but 17 HP. The Stand Guard veterans are not focusing them down. If the Stand Guards had been focusing down that Raptor Squad, it would have most definitely gone down. Now the Stand Guards are in a little bit of trouble, getting knocked over by the Barrage there on the grenade launches, might even lose a model themselves. Gain down the Raptors would have been massive there for attackers, and very fortunate for him that his tactical marine, um, his tech marine also got away just barely. Surprisingly, calling in a drop pod for tactical marines could even go for a plasma gun upgrade on that fresh new tactical marine squad since he has already got a stand guard veteran squad. That's Warboss though, taking a lot of damage, not retreating really sure the way, just trying to walk out of the area. Going to be unsuccessful in doing so. Meanwhile, ASM desperately trying to jump out of there. One model decided not to jump and just got mauled down by some banshees. You know, some banshees for marking mark, trying to chase down the enemy banshees. Enemy Wart Spider Squad is going to get four stuff and Slug is going to jump into the fight, but the Banshees can easily win that engagement, especially with double Dire Avenger support. Banshees with a higher melee skill are most likely going to special down at these Sluggers if they don't retreat away in time. They do land a special, but the Sluggers are already casting their retreats, but the thing is, they retreated far too late and actually just get destroyed by these Banshees. The Immolator Warlock gets to be very effective against the infantry armor of the Scout Squad. But in the end, we'll get four stuff, and red team just going to dominate this engagement here, and even going to in for a capture on blue team's generous farm. Actually, decided to cancel the capture and decide to go in for the burn down instead. 264 VPs to 388. Blue team are falling behind in VPs. Red team seems to be applying a lot of pressure against them at the moment. Meanwhile, that melee tech marine has just been an absolute monster here, cutting his way through multiple units. Very nice special there from the tech marine against those heretics. If it combined with the bionics, it would have wiped the entire squad there. But it can be a bit more difficult to do. Plasma devastators firing away though. Regular devastators getting burned out of the building by that noxious cloud. Very unfortunate for them. Meanwhile, 
some more action going down on the left hand side. A lot of players don't seem to be focusing on the mid too much in this game. Normally you see a lot of action focused onto the mid, but that might come in later on as the game progresses. But Raps is though very effective at taking down models on retreat. That power fist is so good at killing units, at killing models, at killing commanders even. The power fist doing 45 DPS only does about it does about 90 DPS or 90 damage sorry per hit heavy melee. But you can always use the demonic strike which does 125 damage melee. And for it, that's even more effective at taking down models. The Warbuster though in melee combat with that power claw fully kitted out with the spiky armor with the angry bits. He is just a one man army at this point. Might even take down his guardian weapons team if the doesn't retreat away in time. The Warbuster though alone does use the stump ability, but it might not be enough. He might actually go down. He's just taking a lot of damage from range and Banshee's also on the chase. Warbuster overextending there, even with his hard ways, even with the massive amounts of health regen, he is unable to stand up against an entire army, against two armies worth of units. Meanwhile, double Mark of Zinch CSM here for a Fox Gamma, but neither one actually having the Spiron Champion. Spiron Champion can always be useful to give the squad a bit of extra tankiness. And it's focusing down the commander. I think that they should be focusing down tactical marines or the standguard veterans. The inferno damage is much more effective against heavy infantry compared to commander armor. And also the plague champion himself should definitely consider getting a plague fist. The plague fist is very good even for ranged blobs of your own. You can always cast a pestilence strike on your own ranged blob when fighting an enemy ranged blob to give yours the ranged damage reduction which it comes in so useful. But that tech marine doing an absolute monster in combat right now, forcing off a CSM squad, popping off a model deck with his plasma pistol. Raptors are going to jump into the Standguard Veteran squad, but an HL No No Fear is activated, allowing them to actually special on 50% of their melee attacks. You can see them just knocking back these Raptors on a constant basis. Plasma Devastators firing away though, and the tech marine is jumping in onto the Heretic squad. A heretic squad, I need to actually do too much, but the tech marine does need to be careful. P dev squad's shots though, are just so close. And that Raptor squad is going to lose a model when it retreats away. The tech marine on the retreat path will definitely be able to do something about it. Might even be able to take down the aspiring champion here. He's going to be wow, the first model that he attacks. The aspiring champion going to go down. That's 25 power down for a Fox Gamma. In fact, a Shrine of Nurgle is going up as well at the same time. The tech marine though, in the end, going to get forced off as he gets a bit too low. You know, on this left hand side, red team are pushing in much deeper, but 170 VPs to 381. Red team are winning this game at the point. And blue team are definitely struggling. Blue team could try and group up now a little bit more as they are losing in all the kind of like solo lanes at this point. You might see them group up a little bit more. And in fact, you actually see a grouping up now as Orcs and Eldar together, Fire Dragons and Commandos. That's a lot of AV. This Dreadnought here for Adeptus is not going to last too long. Commandos missile launcher doing 150 damage. Oh, but the Loves of Daka rocks combination here could be brutal. And he is going to take down a few squads at the very least here. But that one scout squad barely able to live overall. Quite a painful nuke going down there though. At the same time, blue team are going to be able to force off red team out of the area. But I would have thought that nuke would have killed a few more units. I'm very surprised at how fortunate some of those squads were inside the rocks actually living overall. And blue team also making a big push here on the right hand side. The Shrine of Nurgle is up for Fark's Gamp, but Orbs of Bombardment is going to go down here. Now that the majority of players are tier 3, we'll see much more nukes, but the scouts are just taking so much damage. What done so much damage there? I do not know. And the Plasma Devastator is going to get forced off as well. I really feel like the player champion would benefit. Pestilent Strike would be so good at shutting down this melee tech marine as he is destroying the Chaos Army right now. The Aspiring Champion might even go down once again. It looks like we'll be able to barely live. Standing out Vestra is going to get reinforced on the field by a drop pod coming in by the tech marine. Going to reinforce all these squads. Backup to full health is a commander drop pod, so it does not spawn a squad with it, but very useful for getting some extra models at the cost of 200 requisition, 100 red. The Plague Champion inside melee combat, trying to focus down the units. These Standguard Vestures are taking so much damage from these Mark of Zinch CSM, and finally the Plague Fist here for the Plague Champion. The Pestilent Strike is so good at countering any kind of melee unit whatsoever. The CSM squad is going to go down, going to fall down to that tech marine as he just pops him in the end there with the plasma pistol. That 
Blake Champion is so low right now and is actually going to go down another special, the exact same special that we just saw, not a special sorry, but the exact same sync kill rather. Meanwhile in the center of the map things are picking up, now both players are grouping up towards the mid side of the map rather than the side lanes. That wall spider that barely gained out today in time, Marky Mark is going to get forced off here. That wall bus with the power claw again, a one man army himself, level 5. By Dragon's trying to go in, hit a haywire grenade, landed onto the Drenor, but the older player decides to back away, but there is an avatar out now for Marky Mark. This avatar is going to do quite a lot of work and support his army quite a bit. At the same time though, Nobs in frenzy stance going to go after this assault cannon Drenor. When you upgrade to the assault cannon, you no longer have any melee resistance whatsoever, so you are much more vulnerable to heavy melee units such as Nobs. But the Warbus though, still being that one man army, just tearing up. A Guardian Weapons team now going after a Scout Squad in particular as well. Scout's actually setting off the spiky arm. In fact, that Scout Squad might even go down one more hit from the Warboss and it's going to do it, but he's not actually going to land at that shot. The Avatar is going to kill this Warboss hit with the help of some ASMs. The Avatar actually does 240 damage per hit there. Heavy melee. An insane amount of damage, but he gets attack once every 3 seconds, which is the trade off. From having such a slow attack rate, or from the trade off for having such high damage per attack, rather. But that war spider, though, taking a lot of damage, banshees are just surrounding him. And with the double fire drags, I'm not sure how long this avatar can actually last. 138 VPs to 266. Lucy must slowly catch them with VPs, eh? Dark Avenger Squad game absolutely melts the dead. Fire dragons gain pummeled by an assault cannon barrage, and banshees are forced off as well. The Avatar was hit by the Haywire Grenade, but that Sulkin and Dreadnought is an absolute threat at an orbs of apartment on the retreat path here. It is going to catch out a Warp Spider squad. This squad, I'd be very surprised if it actually lives, but it looks like it might even be able to do so. One model, or two models even. Nope, one model. Gets away there at 126 HP. The Orbs of Mabama not being the most effective nuke at trying to finish off squads, but very useful in terms of crowd control because it lifts up units both retreating and non-retreating. You know, our Plasma Devastators have remained alive for the entire game here for attacks, and looks like he's going to just set up shop here with this drop pod, but the thing is, shop is going to be unset up. Now as Red Team moves on in, the Avatar coming in, the ASMs are jumping in. It's going to be three people now on this right-hand side of attacks, just hitting that retreat button because there's nothing else that he can actually do to hold the position. Meanwhile, that melee tech can trying to remain in the fight, but he's going to get forced off just like the remainder of his army. But with all the people here for the red team, blue team should be able to be able to should be able to push elsewhere on the map at this point. 138 VPs to 197. Blue team starting to even up the score in terms of VPs. The avatar remains in the center of the map though. But it is half health, does need to go back to base if he wants to regenerate its energy. Warbus is jumping in, taking a lot of damage, doesn't have hard or does have hard boys on himself, in fact. But Nobs in Frenzy stance, going to be immune to knockback. Where's that Warbus just flown to? Not sure what he got hit by, but he just flew there. You know, the Nob squad though, focusing down a Tech Marine. That Tech Marine is just going to fall. These Nobs are fully upgraded. Huge hammers, a Nob leader, and a Mina and Greener upgrade for that Frenzy ability. We're going to get a forced off here in the end. We're really able to do too much hard boys and use the choppers on them. Could turn them into quite a threat. Meanwhile, ASM taking a lot of damage, the Providence armor on the Warlock, but with the Immolator weapon, normally see Providence getting used with the Merciless, not the Merciless Witchblade, but with the Witchblade of Kernus, because you can spam the Ethereal Slash ability so often. But with the Immolator, though, it can prove quite decent against lots and lots of infantry when you just want to spam the Immolator ability. The Providence armor providing immunity to damage for 15 seconds is a tier 3 armor, does cost quite a lot of power at 50 power for the armor. But friendly fire though from the Plasma Devastators is hitting a friendly scout squad there of Rataxus, doesn't need to be careful with where they're firing at. And also very close to hitting his stand guard veterans as well. But a predator is now out for him, and I'm not sure what Fox is going to do against it. He does have Raps as a source of AV, he does call in some Terminators. I don't think Terminators are the best choice here, given that melee tech marine is just a monster at melee. Look how much damage these Terminators have already taken. They've already taken a thousand damage to Plague Champion coming in to actually give some assistance. 
the Terminators in their default, with their default power fist and storm bolts is not the most effective at melee or winning melee engagements. Their power fist only doing 35 damage per hit, not even doing 45 damage per hit, it's actually doing 35. Blade Champion though is going to be able to kill that Tech Marine, but at the same time these Terminators are just taking so much damage, they're down to half health already, and the Blade Champion is also going to potentially fall down in this engagement as well. Play champion will be able to get away with just one HP. Terminators teleporting very aggressively, but with that aggressive teleport, they have no way of escaping. Meanwhile, in the center of the map, the Haywire Grenade onto the Drenal with the Banshee is going to go in there. They do have the heavy melee exile, and the fire drags are firing away. Fire drags are mute to knockback, though, ignoring those ASMs for the most part. And Walt Spider is definitely going to fall down in this engagement, but it doesn't actually matter too much. Well, Spider cannot easily get resurrected in that area. Meanwhile, the Avatar is getting dumpstered on by some knobs, thrown away there with their huge hammers. With each ring they get around them, they get an extra 8% damage, and they can have up to 3 rings, giving them an extra 24% damage potential. Nobs desperately trying to go in for that avatar still, but going to be unsuccessful in actually killing him. And now the Land Raider Redeemer is coming in and is going to just be pushing in through mid. Blue team on 116 VP, so 111 now having the advantage over red team as they have been behind in VPs for the majority of the game. Land Raider going in with the Frag as to take down a Nob model on the retreats there. And Land Raider Redeemer will prove very useful as Red Team tries to reclaim this center of the map and some infiltrated scouts for that left hand side. Meanwhile, Blue Team look like they're going to be in control of this VP if they actually had a unit in the area to capture it. It's only a predator. As we all know, vehicles cannot capture. That seems to be the calm before the storm now. Wraith Guard Squad is going to go in. This Assault Cannon Dreadnought in need of some repairs. It's level 3, has done a lot of work and has managed to live quite a bit throughout this game. But Wraith Guard taking a lot of damage. The Wraith Guard are extremely grouped up here in a very tight circle. It's going to be very annoying when it comes to AoE abilities or AoE damage, such as that weird boy. ASM is trying to engage against the Warboss. This is a big mistake here for these ASMs. They're going to actually go down here. That Warboss, though, with the Power Claw, if he was a little bit faster, could have got in that melee swing that he needed to finish off the squad. Raptors upgraded to Melter Raptors. Not really a fan of Melter Raptors as much as they can be quite useful. A jumping squad with Melter weapons and with a Melter bomb ability. It sounds much better in paper or in description than it actually is. I mean, one Eldritch Storm going to go down here, but the <laughs> Land Raider Redeemer just easily dodges it and nothing is actually getting touched by it. A D Cannon got slightly pushed around by it, but that is all. The red Team still needs to actually capture the center of the map, or Blue Team needs to actually force them off in order to get the center of the map. In my predator on the side remains alive, nearly level 2 as well. And it looks like Retax is going to be able to push through and capture the VP. You know, on the center of the map, though, Red Team are going to go in for the capture, and Blue Team going to be holding their own natural 115 VPs to 56. Fox Gamma going to be pushing in once again. I'm not sure how well these Terminators are still going to do, especially now that there are Plasma Tactical Marines, or given that there were already Plasma Tactical Marines on the field. Terminators though should consider getting an also cannon or potentially lightning claws, one of the upgrades they really do need. At this point, the storm bolters by themselves are good if the enemy has a lot of infantry, but given that it's a lot of heavy infantry and there's also a vehicle on the map, the also cannon might be a good choice to actually have some better overall damage against the multiple dam multiple armor types. At the same time, lightning claws might be a very good choice if you want to play very aggressively with your terminators and teleport on top of these stand guard veterans and tactical marines and try and just kill them or force them off the field very quickly and also very good at countering this melee tech marine who is now level 7. 165 energy is just absolutely insane. Noxious Cloud is going to go down on top of this army but I don't think the army particularly cares at this point when they're just going to go in and win the engagement. Meanwhile, phase shift onto some friendly units here by Marky Mark. I think he um, misclicks that though. Or maybe he's actually doing it intentionally. The phase shift does grant you an extra 40% damage resistance shortly after, I think it's about for 10 seconds after you've used it. 
and that will come in very handy here as the Avatar goes in, not even taking that much damage here at this point. And Wraithguard throwing away the Fire Dragons, they are heavy infantry taking a lot of damage from the Melted Damage type of these Wraithguard. In fact, Melted Damage is effective against all damage types. 81 VPs to 48, the War Boss is going to go in. There are some knobs here, but knobs are definitely ineffective at countering a Land Raider Redeemer. They do turn on their Frenzy, so they are immune to suppression, but not immune to knockback gain. Knocked over by the Frag Assault, they are level 3 knobs. And maybe this Land Raider will, in fact, go down. But as soon as these knobs of frenzy ability runs out, they will get suppressed as you can see there. Commandos are frying away, but there's just a lot of melee counters now. The avatar here as well, these knobs are just getting absolutely destroyed. Down to just three models, going to lose even further models, only down to just now the knob leader. Gain away of 100 HP, tank buses are on the scene, but tank buses not having much of an impact. It gets a 2500 HP super vehicle. Avatar pushing further forward, red team with two super units on the field and also some terminators, meanwhile blue team having no such super units at all or even any kind of terminators or any kind of high value units, they do have some knobs which actually went down in the engagement for Dawnbringer, I'm not sure what happened to his knob squad but it actually died and I'm not sure how, it looks like that could be the knob model there on the ground. I'm sure that the knobs got away there with 100 HP, but apparently they did die. Banshees, though, able to take down a Raptor squad, but might pay for it with their own life. You know, our Terminators are going away, a weird graphical glitch appearing on the screen. Also, can an upgrade now purchased on the Terminators. The Avatar going to be pushing in further forward. Predator going in a little bit too hard here for attacks. is going to take some rear armor hits, potentially, but no one is focusing down that Predator instead. You know, Plasma Devastators firing away some stern guards, taking a lot of damage here from the Wraith Guard and also Cannon AoE. They are grouped up quite heavily. Wow, two models taken down on retreat, along with an extra model potentially from this avatar. You know, things are getting a little bit desperate here. 60 VPs to 31. Red team are most definitely desperate for VPs at this point. They are half the amount of VPs of blue team. But another predator coming out here for attacks as these double predators should easily be able to kite around this avatar here for Marky Mark and should be able to do quite a number against Adeptus's Land Raider Redeemer in the center of the map. Meanwhile, the melee tech marine just flying around here by himself, but taking quite a lot of damage. That avatar doing a massive chunk there with his massive sword. War Boss going to go in for a capture onto the natural, meanwhile Red Team going to be on a 2 to 1 cap at this point. Blue Team now going to be feeling the pressures, now the VPs are getting even lower for them, they're going to be sort of lower on VPs than Red Team in a second. Distortion, <laughs> the beat of shot is destructive here, these tactical marines are definitely going to get killed by that. And now they are just floating limbs on the ground. Predators though should have an easy time kiting around the avatar, it'll take quite a while before the avatar takes enough damage to get forced off however. But Nob's going to go in for the Land Raider, once again Nob's are again are not the most effective against the Land Raider, there's even a turret in the center which is going to get pops here, the avatar is trying to defend the VP, ASM trying to defend, you know, Plasma Devastator is firing a bit aggressively there. As with Devastator, so for a depth skin, get forced off. Fire Dragons are firing away though at the Land Raider Redeemer. It's not going to be enough to take it down. This Land Raider, supported by Tech Marines, which is supported by Scouts as well. That's two sources of repair. Add on top of the fact that the Blessings of the Omnizire is available for Adeptus. And you've got three sources of repair. That Land Raider Redeemer is just so tanky. It's not going to go down. The foot of Gork Ability is going to go hit down. It is pl <laughs> Plasma Cannon damage. No Scouts not getting inside that Land Raider quick enough. 12 VPs to 31. Plasma Devastators carry on firing away. Everyone fighting over the central VP. Whoever gets the central VP could potentially win the game, but that Land Raider Redeemer is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. And it's going to be such a useful base of operations here for Red Team. You know, the War Boss, the only unit remaining in this engagement here, is going to get forced off fairly soon, but the Shimmer Orb going to go down isn't going to prevent knockback from it. Fire Prism, but it's also coming at all from these P Devastators that are firing away as well. The Plasma Devastator is actually missing their mark, they're firing far too far forward. Red Team going to get a capture here, might even force Blue Team to lose the game. Plus, Predators are firing away, Red Team do get control of the central VP, and Elder Storm is about to go down, but that Land Raider Redeemer might even go down before it. But Predator does hit the dust there, phase shift, going to go down, going to prevent any units from the area capping. Predator also phase shifted, but blue team running out of VPs here. Red team able to secure the central VP before blue team, and they will be able to win the game. 
if the blue team had managed to get that sense of VP, they may have been able to win it against red team, but it all came down to that final engagement, and that land raider redeemer just refusing to die, even now, still alive, still making a lot of noise, I'm going to pan my camera away because that is a bit loud. But that is going to be game, be sure to check out though the monthly rumble tournament this Sunday, and be sure to check out the faction wars as well this weekend on Saturday and Sunday, and I'll see you then.